20 years and Tommy Lloyd's imprints all over that offense a year ago and certainly he has brought that same formula to Tucson. He's got smart guys, a lot of international guys that grew up around the game, egoless, skilled guys that play with a lot of balance. Just as you broadcast, a lot of balance. We go anywhere, and we will tonight. Yeah, some good, some bad. Should be a fun one. It's the only top 25 matchup in college basketball tonight. Tennessee as a team gets 37% of its points from behind the arc. Got to shoot the ball well. Chandler looking inside. And Arizona take it averages with its regular 6-7, one of the tallest teams in college basketball. Best could be off the three and an offensive rebound. Balls don't get a ton of those tonight. Josiah Jordan James. Now Arizona, as good as they are defensively and offensively, they ball watch a little bit when that ball is shot. Tennessee trying to take advantage of it on the offensive block. Cats have had the same starting five every game this season. Benedict Matherin is off the mark with his first attempt. Tennessee hasn't played in eight days. Remember, the Memphis game was canceled. Supposed to play that in Nashville at Bridgestone Arena. They showed up. They had a scrimmage. That was about as much work as the Vols got in that day. Here's Chandler. The lob. <laughs> Olivia Kama with the jam. A good paint decision by Kennedy Chandler early. It all started with Fulkerson fighting to get the ball out of the double team. Chandler with the rip. Takes it in, and Tennessee is off to a 6-0 lead. You're looking at the number two defensive club in the country, dressed in white tonight. And they get another steal. John Fulkerson tracks it down and took a bump. All falls early. You know your team's ready to play on the defensive end of the floor when they're alive and electric on their ball screen coverage and they're guarding the ball. And look at the hot hands of Kennedy Chandler with a rip and run. And this is a Tennessee team that can put it on you now on the defensive end. Arizona coming off of a win Saturday against Cal Baptist. They had five double figures on that one, 84-60, though they trailed early. Rebounded by Kirk Creasa. Back-to-back -back turnovers for the Wildcats. They came in averaging fewer than 13 turnovers a game. And they turn it over on the fourth consecutive, third consecutive trip, excuse me, and then Tennessee gives it right back. It's a careless turnover by Josiah Jordan-James. What does Rick Barnes' club do defensively? You asked me before the ball game. I think they are tremendous at guarding the ball. They win the line of scrimmage on their ball screen coverage defense. And they also win the gap plays, I think, more than they lose it. We've already seen a couple of examples of that tonight. Arizona's top two scorers are Matherin and Tubelis. Both top five in the Pac-12 in scoring. Creasa looking for an assist. Tubelis is off the mark. What a slow start for this Arizona team, which flew in Rocky Top last night. And this is the start of a long road trip. They won't be back at the McHale Center until mid-January. They've got a pair of other top 10 teams on the road waiting. Veskevi dives for it, and we got a foul on Arizona, it looks like. Tony Green with the call. What an effort play by Veskevi because he gets that thing ripped and could have given up on it, but instead the dive, the first guy to the floor gets the advantage of the call. Azulis Tubelis, averaging 16 points a game, commits a foul. That's his first, and they're explaining the call over there to Tommy Lloyd. After Tubelis fell on him. Tennessee attempts 28 three-point shots per game. As a result, Arizona is going to be pressed up outside that three-point line. Drive opportunities could and should be there for Tennessee. Into the corner for Jester Powell, and he strokes it home. Tom, you got to do it. You've got to drive that pressure. Burn the pressure off with a hard drive and find that backside bomb. Very well done by Tennessee. Powell, a kid that transferred here from Auburn after last year. Watch the drive. Win the belly part of the floor, as Rick Barnes talks about. That SEC logo attack the belly for the kickout. What a start by Rocky Top. Balls four for six from the floor. Arizona 0 for two. Cats have turned it over three times. Risa 
Had a bounce off Coloco's hands. Pull up from Matheridge. And Arizona, three and a half minutes into this one, still scoreless. Arizona not able to run offense right now. Just guys are having to make plays. What cut? Taylor the feed. And James cut off. We'll give it right back to Arizona. Well, if you had Arizona being scoreless through three and a half on your bingo card, <laughs> you're in line for winning tonight. Yeah, what's this, wrong with the Cats on the offensive end? Well, what's wrong is that Tennessee's right in their airspace on every catch. And like we talked about how they load to the ball side, Tennessee does. Arizona's already had to make three or four plays in a crowd. And that is not how you win on the road. Kai Ziegler and Uros Plopchich in there for Tennessee. Rick Barnes going deep to his bench already. It's an Arizona team without, especially in the front court, a whole lot of depth. And without Kim Aiken Jr. again tonight. He's been a key piece early on. Ben Matherin gives him their first bucket. Talk about Arizona getting 50 points a game from the paint. This shit's not off post up. They are very good, Arizona, inverting their offense, getting their guards posted up as well, just like Matherin did. Ninth in the country, 2% is a 58%. Lopchick's just kind of left by his lonesome 19 feet out. Deep one, Vescovy. And Plopchic on his 23rd birthday finds a rebound. Another miss from deep. Inside Jordan James tracks it down. Here's Ziegler. Yeah. And the freshman hits another corner three. Tennessee's banged him in from both sides. That's how Cal Baptist started off the game on Saturday against the Cats. And a throw away. Three on one. James with the chance. This start for Tennessee is borderline unbelievable. Tommy Lloyd knows the next dead ball is a timeout, so he doesn't want to burn one right now. But man, does Arizona need a good offensive possession right here. And instead, it's another turnover. The fifth. Ziegler, the feed. Powell, the finish. And he can't afford it. He's going to have to take one right now. He didn't want to do it. Oh, an unbelievable electric start defensively. And it all goes back to Rick Barnes's belief, and Mike Schwartz, to me, is one of the best defensive minds we have in all of college basketball. He's kind of like what Mark Adams was to Chris Beard at Texas Tech over the years. This guy is the mastermind behind. Watch out. Tennessee going full court pressure. Jimmy was open, and a fantastic save by Matherin. Yeah. And then they throw it away again. Arizona has six turnovers, only four field goal attempts here early. Arizona is shook in Knoxville right now. And the first thing Tommy Lloyd should have told his guys in that last timeout, calm down and remember, we are wearing blue jerseys tonight. Throw it to a guy wearing blue. It's only the third road game of the season for the Cats. They went to Illinois, had an impressive win against the Illini. They got Michigan on the court, and they demolished Michigan. But this is a different animal here tonight, apparently. Tom, Arizona's only faced three top 100 defenses. And they have shot 23% from the three-point line against those defenses. They're going to have a hard time getting to that number tonight with the way they're starting. Tennessee in the giving mood. Third turnovers for the Volunteers. Matherin wow. fouled on the three by Justin Powell. And Benedict Matherin will have three free throws coming his way. Just a bad, undisciplined closeout by Powell. I mean, you got this game under control 16-2. to two. Arizona's not seen a good rim at all, and you're going to bail out and let them get to the line and shoot three unguarded shots. So Matherin, sophomore from Montreal, played in the NBA Academy in Latin America in Mexico City. Alongside Santiago Vescovi. Suiting up for the Volunteers. Matherin's got two more coming away. Now, who's playing better coming into this ball game from that wing spot in college ball than Matherin? Maybe, maybe Ochai Abadji from Kansas, but those two guys have set the bar. Well, Matherin's got one of the most impressive nuggets I've read this season. He's the third in Arizona history. He named back-to-back Pac-12 player of the week. The one said Asad Adams and a guy by the name of Steve Kerr. That's pretty good company. Absolutely. Matherin knocks them all three down. And now Arizona shows a little 1-2-2. Two, two. Make the young guards for Tennessee, both freshmen on the floor, make a good decision. 
The veteran John Fulton yeah. Shin, one of the oldest players in college basketball, gets his first bucket. That's going to be there tonight for that five position for Tennessee. The drop coverage for Arizona allows your five man to make shots at the nail if he can make it. Fulkerson playing in his 142nd career game that's now tied with the all-time lead of Tennessee. A little uh, chatter between Matherin and the freshman Sakai Ziegler. You know, 130 years ago yesterday, James Naismith had been in the game of basketball. I, I think Fulke had a double-double in that game. <laughs> that's how long he's been playing, right? Yeah. If you go back and look it up. I think he hung the peach basket. <laughs> no one. No one has worn that Tennessee jersey with more pride than Fulke. A rip by Chandler. Couldn't quite reverse it in. And it will be Arizona basketball. By trying to reverse it in on the back side of the rim, he kind of avoided the foul that was going to come. And he's just taken it up on the right side to start with. Justin Kyer, the Georgia transfer into the game. Right there. If he just goes in on the right side, I think he gets hit hard. And Kyer stepped on the end line. Another Arizona turnover, the eighth of this half. The visitors are sped up in this building, are they not? Half court offense just going at 100 miles per hour when he's to back down to about 75. They did get off to a slow start against Cal Baptist, down 11, four minutes into that game. Didn't lead until the nine minute mark of the first half. Now they were down 13 to Illinois in a building that was rocking and fought their way back. This is a complete team and a long ways to go in this game. Ziegler pulls up. And he's playing with confidence. Dale and Terry the rebound. Arizona hasn't had much of a chance to run. They do here, and it's reversed in by Pella Larson, the Utah transfer. The average possession link for Arizona is 14.2. That's another common thread that Tommy Lloyd brought with him from Gonzaga, putting pressure on your defense quickly. Chandler's leaner. Watch it with the rebound. Just hammering Tennessee is on the offensive glass. He saw an, a, a weakness on film. They're sending three guys every time. Umar Balo walked with it. Turnover number nine for Arizona. What do you do if you're Tommy Lloyd? How do you get a team to calm down, whether it be this environment or the competition? Yeah, whatever. Well, I, I love the conversation we had today, Keith, because he said, I'm not a guy that's going to just go nuts on the sidelines because I've been with the calmest guy in college ball, Mark Few. I've learned from that. And what Tommy Lloyd has told his guys is, you figure it out within the game. And can you slow yourself down and, and run stuff? That is the question for the team in blue. He said, listen, we're not going to go undefeated. Nobody does that. It hasn't been done since Indiana. And he said, it's okay if we lose one. We'd rather not have happen tonight, but it will happen as Fulkerson gets his second. Arizona's turned it over six times in its last eight possessions. Arizona came in with a 38% two-point defense. One of the best in the country. Tennessee going right at that number. Here's Matherin for three. Way off. Priestel will pot fire. And Kama with the board for UT. Arizona's only taken seven shots to Tennessee's 17. Chandler, freshman from Memphis. Didn't get a chance to play against his hometown school on Saturday in Nashville after the Penny Hardaway squad had COVID issues. Vescovy high off the window. And then a trip on Justin Kyer, and it's his first. Timeout in Knoxville. One of the last undefeated. Number six, Amy Lloyd, for what he's done. A program that was not ranked in the top 25, and they're fighting their tails off right now to get back in this game. The job that Scott Drew has done at Baylor after losing four starters off a national championship team. And to me, they are the best team in college ball right now, and Coach O at Iowa State. His guys are undefeated as well. Th those three guys have done an unbelievable job so far. And fair to say unexpected at all three yeah. stops with the reloading. Think about this for Baylor. They are the only team in the country when you combine Baylor's offensive and defensive numbers. Efficiency-wise, they're still in single digits. I think, I think they're five offense, four defensively. That culture of joy 
at Baylor is also a culture of toughness on the defensive end of the floor. I, I, I think there's a little separation between Baylor and everybody else. We all see the game differently, but five or six terrific teams at the top right now. And Altsburger leading a team at Iowa State that had just two wins last year before yeah. they revamped their roster. But they lost 18 in a row last year, Iowa State, to finish the year, and now they've rattled off 12 wins in a row. What a flip. Arizona looking for some offense. It's been tough to come by. And that time, a block shot by Josiah Jordan James. Tennessee has won so far all of the contact plays in this game. A little surprising considering the physicality that Arizona brings in the uniform. Hella Larson. Uh, excuse me, one Larson. But Arizona gets whistled for the hole. Well, going back to Tommy Lloyd in this start, 11 and 0 to start. Has we haven't seen that out of a Pac-12 head coach since Stanford's Walter Powell in 19-20-21. And of course, Pop McHale started his career at Arizona 21 and 0. Teresa had the last foul on him. The three doesn't go. And offensive putback. Rubar Ball. He is really playing well. And coming off of maybe his best career game. His body percentage follow is down to 10% body fat. A major factor for Arizona going forward. And a double-double against Cal Baptist, 10 and 10. With five blocks. From Mali, he also played at NBA Latin America in Mexico City alongside Matherin and Vescovy. Tom, with all the international guys in this game tonight, the high level that they play with. I think those international kids, I know they do, they grow up with a do-your-job mentality. And they see all types of ball screen coverages and different offensive concepts. Probably both these teams are really good international players. It was a great story. I think it was in the athletic when Sean Miller got his team together before last season. And he does every year, did every year. So tell me how many points you want to average and minutes you want to play. And it, of course, adds up to at least not enough minutes going no. around. But it's two guys from NBA Academy, Matherin and Ballo, both said, Coach, we, we, we're not comfortable answering that question. That's not how we learn how to play. Yeah. We do whatever you tell us to do. That's the that's that international experience. And that, a lot of these kids have played international ball in the under-16, under-18, under-19. Tommy Lloyd's been right on top of accrediting Sean Miller with not only the talent, but the defensive toughness that this, this team plays with that he inherited. Mazulis Tubelis, second leading scorer, just picked up his second. Volunteers in a drought, another bump. And that one comes from Dalen Terry. Two different starters have two fouls apiece. Here's the NBA Academy in Latin America we're talking about. Matherin, Vescovy. And Ballo all in the same squad playing in Mexico City. Well, that NBA Academy across the world has done wonders for the growth of the game. And those college scouts have their eyes on those academies. They play a high level of ball. They have done a tremendous job identifying young players and bringing them into the academy. That's a great prep for going away to college. Stay in the dorms, get you ready with classes. Sure. And, uh, oh, by the way, get to play ball nonstop. Tennessee's missed its last four. After a red-hot start to this one, the Volunteers have cooled down a little bit. They average nearly 79 points a game. Vestigy with the ball fake, had it poked away, and goes over the backboard. Looked like Creasa got it. But it'll be Arizona basketball. Well, Tom, Arizona, they've got to fight their way back in this game on the defensive end. And we've talked about Tennessee's defense. Arizona's top 20 as well. And they can climb right back up into you and force turnovers. Wild catch is 3 for 10 in this game with 9 turnovers. Matherin got deep, and he'll go back to the free throw line again. Matherin cuts with a purpose. That time, the, it was the corner cut as the ball was being driven at him. I talked about Arizona's ability to score points around the rim. Look at the corner cut. Scobie gets his head turned, and Matherin is so good at moving without the ball. He's a full 6'6". He cuts hard, understands the game, can really elevate with a jump shot, hard to get to his ball. A hard guard, zero in blue. Matherin perfect from the free throw line. Got another one coming. Preseason first team all pack 12. 
last year in the Pac-12 freshman team. He exploded this summer at the FIBA Under-19 World Cup for that Latvia team. And that international experience, playing games in the summer, keeping sharpness and the edge about you, a real advantage. And a big one against Japan. Pumped in 30 points in that game. Vescovy. There's Fulkerson now. Lefty put it on the floor and walked with it. Uh, two plays in a row now. Tennessee has driven that ball into gap help that's been waiting. And Rick Barnes wants to win the belly part of the floor. They gutted the defense. But Tennessee has to play off of two feet when they get the ball into the belly part. I'm just picturing the trunk of a Christmas tree every time you say that. Maybe it's the season. <laughs> oh, wow. Look at Chandler with the reach in. The first on the Tennessee freshman. Third team foul against the balls. Tennessee really impacting any type of ball screen action that, that if they get into a double team, they're really impacting the ball hard there, Tom. Not allowing Arizona to get downhill, turn the corner, have clear vision as a shot or a pass threat. Rick Barnes is a very demanding coach and demands that attention to detail on the defensive side. Here's Mather for three. Arizona continuing to struggle, especially from deep now 0 for 5. And an offensive foul will go against the Volunteers. That will not be a popular call in the eyes of Rick Barnes. Rick Barnes felt like that his offensive player got jumped in front of in transition. And there's Kerr Creasa. He's one of those crafty type kids that will try to make a player two like that per game. This time the call goes in his favor. He's a kid that doesn't seem to get rattled on the road. He'd be no. just as happy blowing kisses to the fans and hearing their boos. He, the guy with the headband, thrives in the talking, talking parts of the game, and I love that about him. He's got a great feed, looking for the alley-oop, and at the end of the possession, Tennessee comes away with it. Volunteers, a scoring job over four minutes now. Escobie had Creason move. Good cash in. How many offensive rebounds is Arizona going to allow before they start, you know, hunting someone to hit? That was a seventh offensive rebound for Tennessee. Man. Powell to fade away. He's got some stuff about his game, Powell does. Rick Barnes is asking him to, to kind of escalate in the fight parts defensively, the toughness plays, but the guy's got some offensive about him. And then an offensive foul, Christian Coloco with the throwdown. Of Fulkerson. Cats have been forced to just one for their last seven shooting. They haven't scored in two and a half minutes, and this Tennessee run continues. Each number six, Arizona 24 to 11. Arizona with a full court press. Trying to find anything to get their offense going. The Wildcats scored 100 points or more three times in the first 10 games. First time an Arizona team has done that. Oh, that's tough. Since 1973. Tom, it, it's hard to throw that lob play against that drop coverage when the drop guy is basically standing at the restricted arc. Yeah. A play that Chandler's got to grow up within this game if he's going to continue to go against drop coverage. Justin Kyer can't hit. Cats still haven't made a three. Oh for 6 from deep. Pounds up in front of Creasa and committed the foul. It's his second. And the Tennessee guard. And Tennessee has no fear right now pressuring the basketball. Feeling like, I believe that Arizona doesn't have drive-by ability. I mean, they are really heating up that ball. I know they fouled a couple of times with their pressure, but if you're Arizona, how are you going to burn that pressure off? Are you going to lift your offense and back cut it? Can you isolate and get your best driver downhill? Can you ball screen it? Tennessee's going nowhere right now, sticking their nose right on that jersey. Tubelis and Coloco average combined 29 points a game. The two bigs are scoreless here early on for Arizona. Creasa back to Larson. Tough shot. Challenge three, rebounded by Vescovy. Guards are really scraping down for Tennessee on that defensive glass. Gang rebound. Fulkerson got his man in the air, and Christian Coloco picks up his second. So both 
Coloco and Tabellis scoreless, and they've each committed two here early on. Tennessee got the bonus at the eight minute mark. Yeah, what, what a smart play by Fulke because his defender, Coloco, is the drop guy in coverage. So he's not even coming away from the restricted arc. So Fulkerson has to take up the slack and make a play. And that time he gets Coloco leaning with a ball fake and gets himself to the free throw line. Really a high IQ play by Fulker. Tennessee has outscored Arizona in the paint tonight, Jimmy. 16 to 6. Now keep in mind, we're not talking about at the rim, just in the in paint. The paint. 15 yeah. feet counts. That's hard to do. Again, you look at the defensive numbers that Arizona brought in this ball game. 38% they're holding opponents in the two-point part of the floor. Best in the nation. Tennessee going right at that two-point defense so far. Bella Larson with the drive. Puts up an air ball practically. Vescovy will lead the break. a small lineup for Arizona. Yeah, so now the now the drop coverage is off the board. It's just straight man at all five spots for Arizona. Double it, reverse it, one more. Matherin and Terry, the two biggest guys on the floor right now for the Cats. Vescovy gets into the paint. Put back no, and it's rebounded eventually by Dalen Terry. Ooh, dangerous play. And a shot blocked by Kamwa. Just stood to admire. It's not just the speed of Tennessee's defense. It's the length at that 3, 4, and 5 spot that has bothered Arizona. Bulky, the lob. Not a great look. Arizona with a chance to push. Here's Kyer. And Arizona remains without a make from deep. 0 for 9. as we finish here at ESPN2 and the app second game of our hoops doubleheader second rank Duke opens ACC play against Virginia Tech at Cameron Indoor who do you like better Paolo Bancaro or Wendell Moore who do you got well on that team they're both equally important I think I, I think overall I like Jabari Smith from Auburn as the next number one pick but I was blown away today shouldn't have been Duke does not have a top 25 team left on their schedule this wow. year think only, about that yeah only ranked ACC team Meanwhile, there's three from the Pac-12 in the top ten alone. Shot clock winding down. Balls didn't oh, see it. And James couldn't draw iron. That can't happen. I thought you were going to say you were most impressed with Bob McKillop because Davidson last yeah. night got a win in Alabama, in yep. Birmingham against Alabama. They turn around today and played this afternoon at home against Johnson and Wales, and they put up 106 points. That was a bad scheduling decision by Alabama. Uh, here's why I say that. You need a three or four day prep for Davidson. Yeah. And you flip the schedule like that because of a COVID issue and you bring in Davidson, you're asking for what you got. They were supposed to play Colorado State, one of the six remaining unbeaten. He's really Matt good. A nice move. Tom, he, he's good enough to single-handedly bring Arizona back in this game. And he's that tougher to cover because of his versatility and his strength and length around the rim. He's got seven of their 13, and now he's got another four. Got tied up and threw it up, and Terry Weimer's got him with a walk. Tennessee is building a wall and stopping the ball in transition, taking away the speed, the run game of Arizona so far. 24 rebounds is like 10 minutes left in the game. <laughs> and, and Seth, he has two in this game. <laughs> That's how good of a rebounder he is. <laughs> My 24 rebounds, that what he said? Yeah, and he's going against a 7-5 guy wow. inside for Western Kentucky tonight. I'm not so sure Kentucky, as we head into conference play, is the best team in the SEC right now. That's a collision. And Matthew gets whistled for it, and Fulkerson is hurt. And he got blown up. Both teams have done a good job of blowing up any type of a dribble handoff or handoff action, but Fulke just got ran smooth over.
John Goldberg shaking up. It's the first of Matthew. You watch Fulkerson on a dribble handoff, and Matherin just boom, trying to blow it up instead of blowing up the action. He blows up Folky. Hard fall, hard hit. And so Fulkerson will go uh, to the free throw line. Two for two from the line so far tonight. Matherin with a nice. Sportsmanship dap him up a little bit. Matherin was surprised how hurt Fulkerson seemed to be. Now Matherin's got to get a touch about every possession right now for Arizona. I mean, he's the guy. That's one for their last nine, and there it is on cue. He's got a dozen. He just got a, a bounce about him that's a little bit different than anyone else. But Tommy Lloyd brought with him from Tucson. 12 of the catch, 16 belong to Benedict Mathrin, sophomore from Montreal, Canada. And drop coverage is back in place, and now Plopsin is going to have to make a good decision with the ball. Vescovy had time to see it up. And Arizona with the takeaway. Ball's quiet lately. Open wing three. Kyer got it. Back to back buckets for the first time tonight for Arizona. Now he's such a fabulous job of quickly finding the back third of the play by Arizona in transition. Kennedy Chandler will use a timeout. It's an 8 0 U of A run. You know, Mathern just going to jump up and make a shot off, off balance. And that pass is so important for three point shooting teams. Tennessee's going to shoot 28 30 a ball game. So they're passing has to be on point to help that number stay 34, 35, 36 percent. It makes a big difference. Arizona, not only the best assist team by raw numbers, of course, they're the top scoring team in the country, but third in the country, assisting at 66 percent of their field goals. Besides Jordan James up the back cut. 8 nothing Arizona run. They've made it a seven-point game. Tire got deep and slid. Another Arizona turnover, number 12. Tom, it's it's very difficult against a team as good defensively as Tennessee to drive the ball initially without a ball reversal into traffic and try to make a play. I know Kyer's trying to be aggressive, but you have to know what you're up against in this game. Get that ball reversed if you don't have a clean look in transition. Marbala is the big in for Arizona right now. Chandler with a little floater. Volkerson got the offensive rebound and then the throwdown. Yeah. And then go against yeah. Lillian Campbell. Just a frustration foul by Campbell. But you got to play offensive post basketball from the waist down. He gets his arms involved right here. That's an easy call. The throwdown. Boy, you're supposed to go the other way. Tennessee led this game by 15 at one point. But their cold shooting has allowed Arizona to catch fire and get back in it. Two on Kamwa. Arizona's two bigs have two apiece. Matherin's still on the floor. He's being guarded by Fulkerson. Interesting matchup. Matherin thought so too. Trying to take a baseline. One more. Kyer baseline. Matherin takes it himself with great length at 6-6, gets it all the way in. He's got 14. Arizona won the gap that time. The ball got reversed on the third side of the floor, and Matherin, instead of shooting from the corner, makes the play out of the corner and wins the gap. Tennessee's drought is now four minutes and 40 seconds and counting. It will continue. Rebound of Apollo. Cats looking to push. Matherin gives it up. Teresa for three off. You can see the unselfishness in Arizona's offense. Fulkerson count it, and he'll get Karakrisa for his second. And that ends a five-minute drought and a 10-0 U of A run. Fulkerson has made some good plays against that Arizona defense. And that was that call could have gone either way because Kirk Kreese, now he's moving up there at the end. 
But Fulkerson from the elbow down has made two or three key plays in this game. The reason why the Volunteers have a seven point win uh, advantage. Eight points for the 24 year old John Fulkerson, fourth oldest in Division I college basketball this season. He donates one dollar for every point that Tennessee scores this year to the Tennessee Fund. Not going to have to give a lot tonight so far. Nice look for Kreisa. Ballo has it rejected by Fulkerson. The ones that Ballo has to make. And he's got the size and length advantage at the rim. You've got to win the collision at the rim in that case if you're Ballo. You have to. Fulkerson's always been a great shot blocker. Yep. Marshall Plumley's school record in high school, Christ School in North Carolina. Arizona turned up the pressure. Even the one pass away now is being body denied. Best to be with a rainbow. His first make. And Tennessee extends the lead to 11. Such a big, confident, kind of cocky swagger shot by Vescovi. Shot clock off. Matherin on the left wing. See if they get it to him. Larson drives, takes it, reverse. No. Seven left on the clock. Here's Chandler to push. No numbers. No matter. Euro step for the bucket. Arizona. The clock down on the half with only 21 points in the first half and Tennessee ends on a bang. Arizona's averaging 91. That's seen a score sheet like this for Arizona this season. Benedict Mathur is the only starter who scored in the first half for Arizona. Well, Arizona's been loose with the ball. They have not been ready for the intensity that Tennessee has thrown at us defensively. And through four and a half road games or neutral site games for Arizona, they are combined 24% from the three-point line. Tennessee just completely erasing those clean three-point looks for Arizona early. By far the lowest point production in a half is for 29 in the second half against Wichita State earlier this season. Three ball is good, and that's Benedict Matherin again. Make a mistake on the baseline out of bounds under two guys go with a cutter. The screener pops wide open. Good start for Arizona. For all of its success defensively in the first half, Tennessee did not have a good offensive first half, just 40% overall. And they weren't able to take advantage of a lot of those Arizona miscues. Dale and Terry scoreless until now. Good hard drive. Arizona wins the battle for the nail on that possession. Tennessee doesn't close it off. Terry attacks it. 34-26. Tennessee with the lead. Under 19 minutes to go. Fulkerson out to Vesky. Vesky did not have a good shooting hand. Three points in the game for the Tennessee guard on one of eight shooters. Chandler, nice feed. Kamwa gives it up. Here's Vescovy. He's now one of seven from deep. The ones you got to make, right? Wide open in the corner. Really good find by Kamwa. Open three, Terry. And a push off by Josiah Jordan James will be his first. Tennessee with a 34 26 lead, a minute and a half into the second half. I, I, I'm, I'm confident that Arizona is going to be a hard team to put away. You go back and watch that Illinois game. They had every opportunity to kind of shut it down when the building started rocking down 13. Fought their way right back in. And there's the substitution I told you at halftime we might see. Because Powell has seen a big rim right now, knocking down threes. Vescovi is not in 24, and White's going to get a chance. Azulis Tubelis hasn't scored in this game. He's fourth in the Pac-12, averaging 16 a game. And then he commits his third personal. He had to sit for a good chunk of the first half. Tubelis only played six and a half minutes, and now he'll take a seat here. Tommy, you could argue their best two-way player. And he gets it done on both ends of the floor, but just an undisciplined frustration foul by Tubelis, and now he has to sit. That, that, that's a big hit to Arizona. Chandler turns the corner. James. Follows his own miss. And now Chandler for three. Arizona's forced to play with a smaller lineup for most of this game. It's Abellis in foul trouble. Coloco as well. Good. It's Creesa with his first bucket. Your pickup point on Creesa is never too high. 
He is a real threat in that transition pull-up three game. James from deep, and he's got an answer. Shot it with confidence. Again, Fulkerson doing damage in this game from the elbow down as a score off the bounce and now as a pass threat. Fulkerson picks up the foul. It's his first. Arizona's had a couple of runs in this game. A 10-0 run and an 8-0 run that just ended on this. So you can drop coverage on Fulkerson. He's going to take up the slack. And they get the fill behind release by Josiah Jordan James. Just another high IQ play by Fulkerson being a playmaker against the drop coverage that Arizona continues to throw out. And Matherin at the free throw line. First Canadian to attend the NBA Academy in Mexico City. Four star recruit. His sister Jennifer played hoops at North Carolina State. Matherin grew up not necessarily just basketball, he played hockey. My not be surprised being from Montreal. Yeah. And he was a quarterback as a young football player. Well, he is projecting out right now to be a top 10 pick. Powell shares it. They break the press, and James gets a 10 footer. Such a hard shot, but a very under controlled attack by Josiah Jordan. James. What, what a catch. Wow. And he's stuck with the rim, but a trip to the line coming from Christian Coloco. So impressive with the hand strength of Coloco to come down with that thing in traffic because he's running full speed. Once he got it, and there's, there's no contact on the body there. I don't know where the contact came from. That's just that, that's all ball to me. But regardless, Coloco deserves to get to the strike because of the, the Valentine to run the floor with some purpose. Missed the first. He is also scoreless. Coming off of a double-double against Cal Baptist. The local from Cameroon played his high school ball in L.A. at Sierra Canyon. And he may have jammed his shoulder on that play, Jimmy. Before, when it, right when he got to the yeah. free throw line, he was rotating the right shoulder, had his hand up there, now rotating it through a couple of times before this attempt. See the shake? I love this kid's story, though. We talk about him growing up in Cameroon. And learned the game on an outdoor court. Not a high maintenance guy at all. Very appreciative for his opportunity through that NBA basketball without borders. But you're right about the right shoulder continuing to bother Coloco. Might be the pack or the shoulder. He not only to get it blocked, but he also jammed it hard against the rim. Something I've never done, so I, 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 I can't relate <laughs> to what he's going through right now. I know he, Coloco, is one of the better defenders in the college game at that five spot. Fulkerson went down. Here's Vescovy looking for a three. Yeah. Got it. Yeah, he, he can make six in a row, and he can miss seven in a row, but the stroke and the confidence is never, never in question. Thompson Bowling starting to come alive a little bit, and an answer from Creesa. Kirk Creesa, his dad was a Steve Kerr fan growing up. That's where he got that first name. Fulkerson trying to step through, oh, and he rolls it home. He has been a hard guard in this game, Fulkerson. Larson off the window. This is the Arizona team we yeah. thought we'd see. Reverse it or shoot it. <laughs> yeah, just yeah, shoot it. Creasa yeah. gets another one. Steve Kerr was good enough. I know your dad named you after Jimmy Stewart. It's fitting this holiday season. <laughs> I was actually named after Jimmy Dykes, the baseball player. The only one ever involved in a player-manager trade. Kurt Kreese thrives, man, in a situation where on the opponent's floor, got that cockiness about him. Terry with the jam. What a run by Arizona. They've made each of their last five attempts. It it's a 7 nothing run. You're lucky I didn't put any juice on that. Yeah, it took four takes for you to finally get a pass in my shot clock. <laughs> And Arizona's assist rate as good as anybody in the country. And although they turned it over a ton in the first half, they're a very good passing team overall. My bad, Mark. Hey, by the way, when we have a minute, while we have a minute, a shout out to our friend Dick Vitale. Thoughts and prayers as he continues his battle with cancer. And you go to v.org to find a raffle ticket for the brand new BMW they're going to give away. The Gallo raised over $21 million last year. It's coming up this spring, May 6th, 
2022. Dick, we're always thinking about you, praying for you. Can't wait to see your next game, buddy. I know Coach Barnes, as a lot of coaches across the country, in constant contact with Dick Vitale. Just a ton of prayers for Dickie V. The game's just not the same without him on the sidelines. Here's Chandler, gives it up. Vescovy finds him again. This is um, shaping up like an unselfish Tennessee team as well. We talked about Arizona's big assist numbers. James off balance, three it goes. And Tennessee able to stretch that lead. Come in the pass. It was right to the shot pocket on the left side of a left-handed shooter. It's, I know it's a very small detail of the game, but, man, those details are so important in terms of increasing your overall three-point percentage as a team. Did I get credit for a steal at the end? Yeah, you did. Teresa, they share it again. It ends up with Matherin. And a foul on a push up inside. Coloco's third. Don't shoot a bad pass. That's the lesson of the night. Does that That's make sense? A, oh, it makes perfect Don't sense. Don't shoot a bad pass. 47 40, Tennessee with the lead. We got a fun one here in the second half. Back on uh, sports going forward, College Football Playoff Committee announced today that. If a pair of semifinal teams aren't able to play via no contest of forfeit, teams will move on. And if uh, one side gets wiped out, whoever wins the other side is a champion. Let's hope we don't get to that. College football playoff on ESPN. A lot of conferences trying to figure out what they're going to do from a basketball perspective. It seems as if most are going away from the automatic forfeit if a team is unable to play. I think the SEC rule is going to end up being if you have seven scholarship players, you can go, no matter who those seven are. Would it be too difficult to ask for a national standard yeah, uh, when yes. it comes to that? <laughs> yeah. I mean, does that, I mean, that, is that not too No, that makes a lot of sense. Too much? It makes too much sense. Common sense is so uncommon at times. Escovy with a circus shot. It'll go to the line. What a step by Escovy. It's Vescovy in Spanish. It's Vescovy in the South. <laughs> Vescovy with the push. Bam, right there. What a smooth move by Vescovy to never take his eyes off the target. Look at the eyes. Even as he's twirling backwards, he gets that thing up on the glass. A really good push by Tennessee's offense. Their run game right there with Arizona tonight on several occasions. That was a third personal on Kirk Risa. And so he'll have to take a seat here in a moment. Leading his case of Patrick Evans. And in fact, Reese is going to stay in the game. So Tommy Lloyd showing some confidence in his sophomore point guard. If this was the last four minutes, this would be a guaranteed make, right? Guys, right. 37 out of 39. In the last four minutes when the free throw strike for his career. I learned that last year on actually as well. <laughs> Remember that game? That's right. <laughs> well, he's not bad otherwise. 75% overall. If you should just you tell him there's only four minutes yeah, left yeah, in the game. Exactly. Got to make hard cuts, man, in this game. He can't be a cannot be a lazy cut or a non-scoring cut. You'll get nothing done against Tennessee's defense. Zabella's back in the game. He doesn't have a single point in this one. He averages 16. Good step up. My combo on like Matherin. Better get there again. Matherin with an air ball. And on that possession, Vescovy ended up guarding Zabella's. They didn't give a touch. Yeah, that's something that Arizona has to understand. And, and if you're Balo and you get a, a small guard switched on you, that's kind of discredit to you. You've got to fight hard to get position and demand the basketball at that point. What speed. Balo got a piece of that one. He's coming off of a five-block game. Jammed his finger. And an air ball from Vescovy. Push ahead. Matherin jams it home. He is so good. He is so good. And what can he not do? Talk about him being a beast on the glass on both ends. Can jump up and make guarded threes. Can get out in transition. A complete player. Zero in blue. He's got 20 of Zona's 42. How? Deep one for Chandler. Tough scoring night for Kennedy Chandler. Only four points, none this half. 
and another one in Arizona. Tommy Lloyd just throws his hands up and waves them off. And Chandler's having a tough night, two out of 11 from the floor. But he's going to have to hang in there and, and keep battling. I talked about him growing up within the game. But right now, Kenny Chandler has taken a couple of shots in this game that Tommy Lloyd wants him to take. Heck of a talent, though, man. Wakes up every day with a plan. No one outworks this kid. That's hard to do on this Tennessee program. He stands for work. The foul, by the way, was the third of Matthew Fulkerson. He's got a Baker's dozen now. That was just pure will and determination to drive the ball to the toughest triangle on the floor by Fulkerson, and he wins that battle. Follow. Blocked again by Kamwa. Olivier Kamwa stepping up to the challenge against a talented Arizona front line tonight. There's not a lot of lift in Balo's game. I mean, the dude's big as a two-door refrigerator, but there's not a lot of lift. Tampa, UCF getting running back Isaiah Bowser back tomorrow for an offense. It's been struggling this year, only 190 yards a game. Is Gus Malzahn still on crutches, my buddy? You know he broke his leg this year. Had to coach from a platform on crutches. Tough guy, though. Played a lot of softball with him. What position did he play? Here's Powell. Don't play shooter. Well, he was the coach, so he got to play catcher, so he didn't have to run. <laughs> Smart. Tabellis turns it over. And then we get a foul on Tabellis. That'd be his fourth, right? It would be. What a mess it's been for Arizona inside in this one. They came into this game with seven straight games of 40 points in the paint or more, third longest in the last 15 years. They only have 18 in the paint tonight. Tommy, it has started with Tennessee's ball pressure defense. Talked about in the first half how Rick's guys had just stuck their nose on a blue jersey and kept that ball pressure hot to kind of take away those clean looks on the inside. Zero points and four fouls to Trebellis. Paulo rips it down. And then Fulkerson got caught with his hand in the cookie jar. There's a reason why NBA teams use drop coverage. And Arizona is sticking with it in this game. That it forces you to make a lot of floaters and tough twos. It takes the roller for the most part out of the ball screen middle action. And when Paulo or Coloco are in the game. That's that's their foundation piece of their defense. Tire gives it up. It'll stay with Arizona with 16 on the shot clock. The Cats have had a bunch of runs in this game. 8-0, 10-0, another 8-0. Did Tommy Lloyd's squad have another one in there without Tabellis on the floor and foul trouble doing it? Well, it can. It's going to start with Kirk Creesa and Matherin's got to start getting some looks. Tough pass. Follow. Again, Kamala got in the way, but it was put back by Matherin. One of the one of the better offensive rebounding wings in the college game is Matherin. James uses a timeout right in front of the Tennessee bench after he got tied up. Arizona's outscored Tennessee by six in the second half. They love him to play his way through this thing. Yeah, he is an elite level guy, but his decision making in this game tonight has not been at the high winning level that he's capable of. There's not a tougher position to play in the college game than being a point guard for a guy that will hard coach. Him. But that's exactly why he came to Tennessee. He wants to be outstanding. And he knows Rick Barnes gets him no leeway. Kamwa has hit shot block and Fulkerson down again. And they'll get Coloco for his fourth. But back to Chandler coming into this one. He had scored or assisted on 35% of Tennessee's buckets. Not the same tonight. Tabellis and Coloco each have four. Tennessee quicker to the ball for the most part in this game. And they've out-rebounded Arizona by five or six. Think about this. Arizona as a team has 27 rebounds in this game. Our guy Shibway had 28 tonight by himself. Oscar Shibway, yeah. Oscar Shibway had more rebounds tonight as a player than Arizona has as a team so far. That's Amazing. Three quarters of the way through this game. <laughs> Sheboy told me before the season started he wanted to average 20 boards a game. I laughed. Perhaps I shouldn't have. He sold himself short. 
Fulkerson's got another one coming his way. Who's the best team in the SEC right now? In, in the last seven days, it's been Kentucky. I thought it's Alabama from off that Gonzaga-Houston game that I did, but then they stubbed their toe at Memphis and have not looked the same since. Auburn, I think, is in the conversation as well. Tennessee, defensively, they're going to be in every single game, every single night. Just a matter or not where they have enough offense flowing. Kentucky blew out Western Kentucky in a hastily, hastily scheduled game by 35. And Auburn got a win against Murray State, 71-58. So as true loyal Kentucky fans would do, they're equating their score against Western Kentucky to Louisville's score. Of course score, they are. And they're saying they would have beat Louisville by 68. Well, the good news is a, a lot of the funds raised tonight go to help yeah. tornado victims from primarily the western part of the state, including Mayville, Kentucky. We saw Mayville's finest. Chris Lofton in the yes. building tonight. Yes. Matherin drains another. He's got 25. He's got a little Lofton in him because at times he leans back a little bit on those guarded threes. I keep telling you, he's the one guy that can get Arizona not only right back in this game, but the lead. He's capable of going on a 9-10-0 run himself. Zero in blue. Tough shot. Kamwa out of the double. And it's rebounded by Matthew. You don't want to shoot it out of a double. You want to pass it or bounce it out of a double. Kyer turns the corner. Arizona trying to hang in there, trailing only by six. But every time Arizona's put something together, Tennessee is answering. Yeah, Kyer had Matthew on a wide open cut. He didn't see, he didn't make the right decision. Balls have missed the last five and a foul on Larson. Can you win the collisions at the rim? Chandler cramping up now. Arizona cut the lead to five. Tennessee answered with an eight nothing run. They cut it to five again, an eight one run. They cut they cut it to four and a seven to two Tennessee run. Hey, did you read the story in The Athletic by Alex Schiffer about how Steve Kerr was going to help with North Korean diplomacy? I did not. This came out last huh. week. When, when Obama was in office, one of his advisors pitched to plan, plan to have Steve Kerr go to North Korea and play horse against Kim Jong-un. Now, Kerr knew nothing about this, and they finally asked him about it the other day when the story was unearthed by, by Alex Schiffer. And he said, you know what? They would probably expect me to let him win because I know what the stories have been about his dad shooting like right. 65 under on the golf course. He goes, Steve Kerr says, but if that's me, I'm going all out. Yeah, yeah sure he is. <laughs> well, Wildcat, great. So instead of Steve Kerr going over there, the, the worm finds his way to North Korea. That would be expected. Here's Chandler. Got another one coming after working his way through the cramp. A lot of growth ahead of, of this kid. He's got a beautiful future about him because he cares. But he's a little bit of a watcher on defense in terms of watching the actions and always being engaged. His voice has not grown near enough in terms of the lead guard for a top 20 team. Very quiet today in the shoot around. But you see, watching on film, how much stuff he has to work with in this game. Here's another Kerr, and he wow. turns it over to close the book on Steve Kerr. He was just named this week head coach of Team USA for the World Cup in 23 and the Paris Olympics in 24. Mark Key right now also named as a full-time assistant for that Olympic team. 15 Arizona turnovers. Ziegler at its strip will get a jump ball to stay with Tennessee. Rick Barnes has the number six team in the country on the ropes. But he's got two freshman point guards that he has to have one of them on the floor at all times. And will their decision making with 909 to go allow Tennessee to keep the lead or build the lead? A lot of thoughts going through his mind right now. Ziegler, the last time out for Tennessee was eight days ago in USC Upstate. Five assists, zero turnovers. Vescovy off the glass. What a controlled bounce of the ball by Vescovy. I mean, he played to the pace he wanted to play with and got off two feet. Made a tough two. Re really, really well done. 10-point lead. Matherin with the rebound. Tip by Tennessee. Creesa, one for three from deep in this game. The ball pressure of Ziegler and Chandler have bothered Kirk Creesa as a shooter. You better stay up into him because 25 and Blue's got a good quick trick. Pardon me. That was wrong. He's three for eight from three. 
Matherin has it knocked away. And they'll get a foul on pick of all, either James or Vesky. And that'll be on Santiago Vesky. Tom, you look at Matherin's ability all over the floor. Tommy's done a nice job of inverting his offense, letting this kid get into some post-up situations. Often like some flex screen action. He's driven the ball through the nail and the elbows. He's made elevated guarded threes. He's gotten on the offensive glass. And what more do you want from a big wing? 6'6", 210. He showed up tonight for sure. And he goes one or two from the line. Virginia Tech Duke coming up next. It's the final ACC opener for Mike Krzyzewski. Mike Barnes has always been terrific at moving your defense from one side of the floor to the other. Not a heavy ball screen guy ever. Vescovy with the three right in front of Kyer. You cannot let Vescovy kind of dribble dance, rhythm dance. That basketball into a shot. I think that's when he's at his best. Good second half shooting for Vescovy after a horrid first half. Matherin with the assist to Terry. Yeah, really under control, wasn't he? Matherin under pressure. Never panicked. No, that's that hard scoring cut I'm talking about that you have to make against Tennessee. Taken away. Three on two. Here's Terry. <laughs> Third on Vescovy, and Dale and Terry scored the last couple of buckets for U of A. Tommy Lloyd told us, I trust my guys to figure it out within the game. And his guys have figured it out in this second half. Good. Just watch how Tennessee loads up to the ball side of the floor. They, they really are heavy gap protection. And then their closeouts are disciplined, but their heat on the ball has been very impressive. They've, they've heated the ball up and stayed in front of the ball, which is not easy to do. Dalen Terry gets it to go. All nine of his coming this half. Four of the five Arizona starters were held scoreless in the first half. Matherin, the only one who got a bucket, he ended up with 14. Trying to trap Chandler. Chandler looking for Fulkerson. That was picked up. We'll stay with Tennessee with a fresh shot clock. If there's an opportunity to say something to a guy on the other team in this game, it's not being missed very often. <laughs> it's getting a little chippy. These two teams with a ton of pride and a ton of swagger about them. Well, Arizona has noticed that Fulkerson has spent more time on the floor than Fries at Powell's, and he picks up a foul from Matherin, and that's his fourth. <laughs> what What'd you just say? Powell's, a big back from East Tennessee, way up in the mountains at Fulkerson's. This great fast food joint. You, <laughs> you need want to go French there. fries on the floor? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Why would you eat in a place with French fries on the floor? <laughs> they spill. It happens. <laughs> it's a fair question, You're good though. for one of those a game. <laughs> Something I have to go back and watch the film and say, what did he just say? Matherin sits with 7-13. He's obviously their main threat. How long do you keep him over there? Not very long. He's, he's, he's too good of an offensive punch. You can't get all the way to the four-minute mark. I know that. And now her Teresa becomes the option, I think, for Arizona. Option one, anyways. Can you get him free for a shot? Well, the Creases nine have come in the second half. Good nice look. feed. And a jam by Coloco. That's his first bucket. One of the few times, a handful of times, that Arizona's gotten inside the teeth. A Tennessee's defense draw two for an easy drop off. Hard to put Arizona away. A young team that plays with a real maturity about it. Going to work. Oh, he got deep, didn't he? He's been really good against Tennessee against that Arizona five man dropping off of him tonight. He's taken up the slack. He's made spin, spin moves. He's been a good passer. A really good middle third of the floor game by John Fulkerson. They get Josiah Jordan James for his second. All his stuff has been in the middle third of the floor. 
And Rick Barnes is keeping him there to keep the help from coming in. Very difficult to double team Folky when he's operating in the middle third. And 10 in white, very productive and very efficient. 17 points on six out of 10 from the field. Kirkreese, a sophomore from Estonia, who's made a three in every game this year. It took him to the second half to find his first triple tonight. More of a perimeter point guard is how I would describe Teresa. 83 three-point attempts coming in, 27 two-point attempts. Gets to the free throw line less than two times per game. But I did Arizona's last game last year at Oregon when Sean Miller had him playing major minutes, and you could see that kid was going to be the real deal. Five-point Tennessee lead. 6.20 to play. Here's Chandler from the elbow. You like that shot? You have to take it against that coverage. Man, that's what the defense has given you. And Rick Barnes told Chandler today at the shoot around, take every one of those tonight that are clean and shoot with confidence. Kyer throws it in. It's a two-point game. A team that completely struggled in the first half from three Arizona has lit it up in the second half. Six of 11 from deep since the break. To 12 to 2, U of A run, Fulkerson. Advantage. Stripped, smart play by Terry, and then a loose ball foul. Tom Fulkerson opened up his body too early that time. Been better off going with a little bit of a shoulder into you with the jump hook that he has. But when he opens up right here and exposes the ball right there, bam, that's just taking candy from a baby. And Fulkerson, if he can get to his high release, it's an unblockable shot, but he opens up too early, allows the defense to chew him up. So here's Justin Kyer, sixth year of college basketball. Started at George Mason, four years there. Last year at Georgia, Tom Crean's team lost four of its five starters and its best reserve to the transfer portal. Including Kyer, and he can't make it a three-point play. Closest it's been since Tennessee scored the first bucket of the game. Yeah, where's Tennessee's offense going to come from then? Tom walking gets you a little bit on the on that low block. Tomo working on Kyer gives it up. Give it right back, Vestibi for three. Spooned out, and then he committed the foul. Got him with the bump, and that's the fourth on Vestibi. Think about the depth that Arizona has shown in this game. Battling through, through foul trouble. They had a chance to go away, but that's a really tough group over there. I, I, I just thought their maturity today and their shoot around, how they handled things, how they went about business. And, and Tennessee was right there with them. But both, both, both guys did a great job today, Tommy Lloyd and Rick Barnes, going half speed in the walkthrough, but full speed with the talk part of it. How hard is that to balance? It, it, yeah, it's, it's difficult to balance, but I think that's how, how you go about shoot-arounds these days. Half speed with your legs so we don't get anyone injured. Full speed, 100% with your voice. I thought both teams were really dialed in in that part of their preparation. Terry misses the front end of the one-on-one, -on -one, but it's rebounded by Creasa. Arizona looking for its first lead of the game. Good cut. Nice cut and layup blown. Coloco puts it in. All started, though, with a hard cut out of the corner by Larson. I know his shot didn't go down, but the value of getting the ball up on the glass let Coloco come in to clean it up. Veteran Terry Weimer just told Larson, leave the ball alone when it comes through the hoop. But a couple times Arizona's done that last few possessions. We talked about it early. Arizona in the hunt right now for a number one seed come March in that NCAA tournament. And their next two games at UCLA and at SC are no joke. Now they have battled their way back into this thing, looking like one of the four or five best teams in the country. And then they've got to go to Tempe, take on Arizona State on the road. They won't be back home to the Cal Center until January 13th. Double bonus now. And Chandler going to the line after that foul on Terry, his third. Free throw shooting. Not anything to write home about on either side lately. Oh, Tennessee. Mathra yeah. back in the game. Yeah, Tennessee only gets eight points a game from the free throw strike. And that, that's a number that has to grow in SEC play if they're going to be a real factor in that league race. 
Chandler makes a second. Matherin, Coloco, Tabellis, all starters with four apiece. So Tani was able to go almost three minutes with Matherin on the bench. And get right back in this game. That was a very important three-minute stretch. Off balance three, rebounded by Kamal. He wants to push it. And Powell on the floor for it. It'll go out of bounds and belong to Arizona. The ball is the most important thing in this building. You know those bad Santa parties where you get a gift and then you pass it on and you keep it? They're just, they That's keep giving the ball did. to the next guy. Yeah. That's what Rick's saying. 10-0 on the year. They've already played one Pac-12 game and they'll jump back into it right after Christmas. Josiah Jordan James, Tennessee's best overall defender, assigned to Matherin. I would not expect that to be a switchable play right now. If you're Josiah Jordan James, you stay attached. Just like that. They did a really good job by Josiah Jordan James to be there with just enough body contact on the catch to force the off balance. Chandler gets down the lane. Good puck. Shuffled it to Powell, and Kyer picks up his second. If you're going to Steve Nash throw that ball behind that backboard. In any college basketball game, you have to have cutters. And Powell that time doing a good job instead of watching the dribble action, hard cut the dribble action, and gets himself to the charity strike. Tennessee in the double bonus. Justin Powell played for Bruce Pearl at Auburn last year. And a technical foul. And it's going against Presa. And that'll be his fourth personal. Well, Kirk Presa is a talker. And as long as he handles his tongue the right way, I love that part about him. But I think that I think he's kind of egging on the call. And Tony Green says, I've had enough of that. That could be a really big play in this game. They'll let you talk to the opponent. They'll yes. let you talk to your teammates, but you, you not, can't not talk to the guys in strikes. No, no. Dale and Terry may have saw it coming. Yeah, it's, oh, it's, hold it's, on, it's not talking to you. It's too late. It's too late. So, Pal has already shot the technicals. Now in the double bonus after the previous foul. Tom, just, just remember those, those two free points that Arizona basically gave Tennessee right there. goes three of four. Stay attached to Matherin. If you're Matherin, you really got to work right now. You got a hard cut, make a second or third cut, and get involved offensively. Here's Kyer for three. Got the touch! Fantastic pass from Terry to find him. Yeah, again, a shot right in the pocket. There was no hesitation. Kyer didn't have to move the ball, fumble around with it, just rose up and released it. Under four to go. Arizona's undefeated season on the line. Trailing by one. Chandler cut off. Shot clock in single digits now. Two freshman point guards on the floor for Tennessee. Ziegler lost it going against the big. Picked up Fulkerson and the foul. And that'll foul out Christian Coloco. You said it earlier, Tennessee beating Arizona to lose balls, and that's a difference in Coloco staying in the game. And Tommy, to me, it's, it's been focusing. Every 50-50 ball, every 70-30 ball, not in his favor. Ten and White has... Now that's a big loss right there, is it not? Coloco on the bench. And how about John Fulkerson's game tonight? It, against a front line that is an elite front line, not just from size, but efficiency, John Fulkerson's got a 17-point night. Well, Arizona's defensive team a little bit has been, we'll see if Fulkerson can beat us. Well, right now, Fulkerson has more than answered that question. Came in averaging eight points a game this season. The offensive production really dropped over the last couple of years from Fulkerson. Arizona has given Fulkerson room to breathe and room, room to operate in this game, and he's taken advantage of it. 
Teresa playing with four fouls. Tubalus on the floor now. Loose ball. Tubalus gives it up as he continues to ice that side ball and force it down. Matherin trying to get down the paint and drew the foul. That's such a big time play by Matherin because you got a short clock going on. There's no offense. It's working for you. And Matherin's going to win the elbow. That right there is a winning play. He got to the elbow before Tennessee was able to protect it. He gets himself to the free throw line because of it. This guy here is a straight up baller. Was he 6'6 six, six and 215? You said? Yep. Yeah, he's every bit of it, too. 26 points tonight. Matherin 7 9 from the free throw line. He carried Arizona in the first half, 14 of their 21, the lowest scoring half this season. And Arizona trying to do it tonight without production from Azulis Tubelis, who's never been held scoreless in his college career, but hasn't turned in a bucket tonight. The good ones, the best ones, get it done on the road. And Matherin had 30 at Illinois. He's about to go to that same spot tonight, right here in Knoxville. Tied for just the second time. Tennessee without a field goal the last 345 County. On single coverage. Tough angle for the lefty Fulkerson. He's got 20. That's the high release. If he ever gets to that spot, it's an unblockable shot. And a good job that time by Fulke to kind of fade away and get to his spot. Watch and that one into the third row. Fulkerson flexing. He's got a season high in points. And Arizona tossing it away again. Turnover number 16. Watch Fulkerson right here when he spins away and gets separation. Watch how high the ball gets. That is an unblockable shot because Balo at seven foot with a long wingspan just can't get to his ball. And Rick Barnes teaches that high release as well or better than anyone in the country. And he's done it all the way back to his days at Texas. Fighting with Balo for a Balo, excuse me, for position. Go to it again. John Fulkerson was the first volunteer in the building. As Balo picks up his first personal, he didn't, Jimmy. I, I know this might sound silly to people out there who don't get a chance to come to practice. A lot of times, big show up and they start launching 20 footers, 25 footers. No, Fulkerson went right to work on the block, yep. first from the right side, then to the left side, and went through his game day routine. You know, he's all about Tennessee. I, last year, when he wasn't sure if he's going to come back, he, he kissed the Tennessee logo and just. His belief in this Tennessee system and the culture that's been passed down from guy to guy over the years, from Admiral Schofield to Grant Williams to Eve Ponds, and now Josiah Jordan James and Mulkey kind of carry that mantle for him. That's a lot of career games that this kid's been through, and he has been a monster in the middle part of the floor tonight. And with all that, only played 10 games his freshman yeah. year. And there's a couple of really bad injuries, dislocated. Right elbow, fractured his right wrist at a good start. Tennessee up by four. 2-10 to play. Yeah, you'd like to get a drive right now if you're Arizona. At least get to the free throw line. Larson. Works it inside to Bellis. First bucket of the game comes at a key moment. Yeah, the first time to Bellis has gotten to that right shoulder. Because he is lethal when he can get there. What a pressure it is, huh? Building rocket. You got a guy like that to throw it to. His season low, career low, two points against UTEP last year. And now he's matched up to Fulkerson. He's not going to give ground to Fulkerson. Tough angle. Rebounded by Matherin. Here's Terry. Arizona looking for the lead. Reese has shot that one quick. And Fulkerson finds the rebound. Rick Barnes going to slow this thing down. He has one timeout to use, but I think he's going to open the floor. And this is where the point guard play has to be right on cue. A young freshman point guard is going to trigger this play with about 10 to go and a minute to go in the game. Does he make the right decision? Nobody in the paint for Tennessee. Chandler takes it himself, has it blocked. Fulkerson wow. Wow. the one on the shot clock. A volunteer hero. He's got 24. John Fulkerson just bailed out. A bad decision by Kennedy Chandler. Nowhere to go. That's just an absolute force trying to go one-on-one. -on -one. 
But again, the guy that has gotten all the loose balls. The value of this game be come selection son. Absolutely it is, man. This, this thing's going to have shelf life. Far from over. Doors still open for Arizona, trailing by four, under a minute to play. How big was the two points that Greece had cost him on the technical? Into the corner, blocked by James! What a job, but James needs to walk away before he gets sprung up, because these officials right now, they have a very short leash that they might need to loosen a little bit. John Fulkerson just went over to the Tennessee bench, and to Michael Schwartz, he wants to set up the defense. James just eats it up, man, with a... He went to the shot side of the body with his left hand and stayed away from contact. Tough place to get it in. How many college basketball players are calling for a specific <laughs> defense on a baseline out of bounds? Not, not very many. Presa struggling with his shot tonight. Here's Larson. Got good size. Ball stripped. No whistle. Matherin wanted it. it. Again, it looked like Matherin opened himself up to the defense and got chewed up. Couple second difference, shot clocking, game clock, and they finally get out the foul. Chandler, yeah, that that should that that could that could be an F1. I don't know if to look at it or not, Tom. But was it a legitimate play on the ball, or was it an intentional grab? It's the fifth on Matthew. I got to be honest. As I watched that live, it looked like Kennedy Chandler going for some time at Tennessee Theater, and a, a, just a hair of acting on the tail end. <laughs> Let's see what it looks like again. It looked like a left hand. There's the foul. right hand reaching. And at the end, though, the little, the little extra grab and throw down. I, they might. Point. They may look at it. They may not. And then Tommy Lloyd, uh, his staff mostly not happy with the whistle they've gotten tonight. Well, Tommy knew that that unbeaten record was going to be tested and taken away from him at some point. He said, "I don't want it to be tonight, but it's going to be, it's going to be okay if it happens because we will learn from it." This is still a legit big time team. With a tremendous future in front of them, and, and, and still pl plenty of plenty of opportunities for Arizona with 21 to go. Remember Tommy Lloyd against Aga last year. Their lone loss, the only loss, came in the national yeah. championship game, 31 and one. I mean, it's 1976 Indiana team, the last to finish undefeated. Another one coming for Chandler. Still only a four point lead. Yep. Tom, I did. You work with me plenty enough to know this. I want my toughest guy right now on the free throw line. I don't. I don't care what the overall free throw numbers say. I want my toughest guy up there to try to close out a game. Pretty good. Maybe one or two. Shot clock obviously off. Game clock at 15. Arizona's got a hurry. Tubelis gets it. 13.6 remaining. And Arizona uses a timeout, trailing by three. What can Tommy Lloyd held to their lowest scoring half this season? Only 21 in the first. Need a takeaway here. Chandler can move. Into the corner. Vescovy taken down. And he'll go to the free throw line. You referenced it earlier. In the last four minutes in overtime, Santiago Vescovy in his career is 37 of 39. You talk about putting your strongest, most confident yeah. guys at the line, this is it. Yeah, well, I think he's, when you talk to Rick Barnes, if anything, Rick loves the toughness of this kid. Played a lot of international ball, man. He's, he's been around the game a long time, but you could ask Rick right now, who do you want on that line? Well, he had his inbounds, know exactly where he wanted to go. Vescovy, 37 out of 39 in this situation. to the two possession game the junior from up to video Uruguay what a huge win this will be for Rick Barnes team has to be of course knocks them both down 12 seconds remaining Teresa into the front court now with eight Fulkerson with the tap away to Bellis six late but it'll be too little too late likely three-point game again well, you got to get it in again and Tennessee still the timeout in case they run into problems Chandler mm -hmm. inbound and best could be going back to that corner again and Powell will take it and go to the line Arizona. Teresa fouls out Arizona just made it way too easy he inbounds the ball I mean, you got three seconds to work with 
you didn't face guard, you allowed Powell just to, 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 just to easily stroll into a catch. I know there's 2.6 to go, but I would have fought a lot harder if I was Arizona to try to discourage that pass. Tommy's probably thinking the same thing. So Justin Powell to the free throw line. Came in just three for five from the line on the season. He's three for four tonight. What was that? I thought never seen that. I thought the official yeah, said something. Kennedy Chandler saying it was Kyer that was talking to him. He looked over to Patrick Evans, the official at the free throw line extended. Tom, I, I have never seen that in any basketball game I've ever watched. I mean, Kyer obviously said something that got Powell's attention, but if you're Powell, you can't, you just can't even acknowledge it. You get talked to all the time. Four point game. Last second heave for Larson would have counted, but Arizona tied it twice with under five minutes to play. Never took the lead. John Fulton.